Last week, I was in Detroit at the official launch event for the Ford F-150 Lightning pickup truck. And although there was a drive event that took place earlier this week in Texas, our team chose not to attend for reasons that a recent blog post on our YouTube channel makes clear. Anyway, while I was in Detroit last week, I got a chance to ride in the F-150 Lightning for the very first time. I got to chat with Linda Zhang, chief engineer for the F-150 Lightning. And I got to chat with Darren Palmer, VP of Ford's electric vehicle programs and Ford Model E. Hopefully you have already seen the first two of those videos, links below, and the third one will be coming soon, once I've had time to redub my audio to fix a problematic microphone on location, which I also had to do with Linda's video. Now, Ford F-150 Lightnings are rolling off the production line. Ford has released a whole bunch of surprise updates to the F-150 Lightning family, including improved payload and improved power figures. We've also finally been told the price of Ford's vehicle to home integration kit, or as Ford likes to call it, the Ford Intelligent Backup Power System. So today, armed with all of these little snippets of information, we're gonna put everything in one video. But first, if you like this video and this channel and all the things we do, well, maybe some of the things we do, why not consider hitting subscribe, ringing our bell, and telling your friends, family, co-workers, heck, even your mortal enemies about our channel. Every share helps us grow, and if you'd like to join the exclusive family of TE supporters on Patreon and on YouTube, stick around until the end and I'll tell you how. Mortal enemies are okay as long as they don't come after us with pitchforks and scary guns. Let's start with all of those important figures from the F-150 Lightning, details for which were unveiled last week when the F-150 Lightning launch event took place. When Ford unveiled the F-150 Lightning just about a year ago, it promised the standard range F-150 Lightning would have a total of 426 horses at the wheels, or 313 kilowatts. But thanks to tweaks and refinements with the motor controllers, Ford now says the standard range F-150 Lightning will offer 452 horses, or 332 kilowatts, in EV land. Meanwhile, the extended range F-150 is up from 563 horsepower, 414 kilowatts, to 580 horsepower, 427 kilowatts. That's not an insignificant increase in power at the wheels, although it's also important to note that total torque from the drivetrain is still 775 pound-feet for both vehicles, which is 1,051 newton meters. How did this change happen? Well, it is down to the beauty of an electric vehicle drivetrain. While Ford hasn't changed the design of its F-150 Lightning twin motors, at least we don't think it has, it has been working to refine the controller software for the truck's power inverters, as well as presumably the truck's battery management system. I'm gonna guess that in the best interests of good engineering, as espoused by Mr. Montgomery Scott of the USS Enterprise, initial estimates were very much on the conservative side of what the truck was actually capable of doing. A good engineer is always a wee bit conservative, at least on paper. What's more, I'd wager that in the future, we may even see more power freed up by Ford's over-the-air software update system. Tesla has unlocked more range and more power for its vehicles in the past, so there's no reason why Ford couldn't do the same. And back in March, Ford confirmed its engineers had managed to squeeze out some extra range from its F-150 Lightning extended range battery packs for the XLT and Lariat trims, up to 320 miles, 515 kilometers from the original 300 miles, 482 kilometer estimate originally quoted by Ford. But power and range aren't the only two things to get improved over the last year. Payload has gone up too. According to Ford, the F-150 Lightning standard range truck gets a 235 pound, 106 kilo increase in its load carrying capabilities. This means it can now carry 2,235 pounds on board or 1,114 kilograms. Meanwhile, the F-150 Lightning Extended Range, which Ford said would launch with an 1,800 pound, 816 kilo maximum load carrying capability, also gets a similarly sized boost in its capabilities. And before you ask, no, the F-150 Lightning Platinum trim 
doesn't get an official range boost over its original estimates. Like most high-end trim versions of well, pretty much every vehicle on sale today, it is quite a bit beefier than its lower trim variants due to all of those fancy in-cabin tech extras that makes it so gosh darn expensive. The next big surprise released earlier this week was a pretty in-depth look at how Ford's onboard route planning system, aka Ford Pass Power My Trip, promises to help customers, quote, tow with greater confidence, end quote. If that sounds like Ford marketing speak, yeah, I, I think it is. But if you dig a little deeper, Ford does pull the curtain back a little on how things actually work. At the heart of it is the same kind of machine learning and cloud-connected smarts that other automakers are using to improve semi-autonomous driver assistance systems. Essentially, Ford is doing what Tesla does for autopilot, but for trailers instead. Don't hate me in the comments. I'm going to explain. See, Tesla uses its cloud-connected cars to feed data back to its headquarters on everything from changes in road layouts to known road conditions, hazards, and more. Essentially, when one autopilot-equipped Tesla comes across an unexpected problem, like roadworks or a change in road layout, it feeds that data back to Tesla so that the next time another Tesla drives down that same road, the car and its driver are better equipped to deal with it. Ford, meanwhile, says it's using real-world data from customers' F-150 Lightnings to help it accurately predict what kind of range people can expect when towing. When you attach a trailer for the very first time, you'll be given the chance to input the trailer's dimensions and the truck's built-in hitch can figure out how heavy that load is. Combined, those data points help the truck figure out how aerodynamic the trailer is and give it an ability to guess at what it thinks is a reasonable range estimate. During a trip, the F-150 Lightning will record changes in elevations and weather, and it ties that all back to refining your range estimate. When you're done, that trip's data is then sent to Ford's data cloud, and the next time you or someone else makes a similar trip with a similar sized load or trailer, Ford's route planning system will be able to more accurately predict how far they can travel. And yes, it also takes into account your individual driving styles. Just as autopilot has gotten better with age, Ford says Power My Trip will become more accurate in predicting real-world range when towing. So if you're like me and you're an early adopter, I'm going to wager that range predictions might be a little less than accurate in those first few months. And if we actually buy the F-150 Lightning that we have here at the channel on order for a while, we've already committed to making a long distance trip with a trailer to tow a car to help a friend out pretty much as soon as the truck arrives. So things could be interesting. Anyway, let us know below if that's something you want us to make a big old video about and we'll do our best. Which brings me to the final piece of information Ford has released this week, or rather, its infrastructure partner, Sunrun, has. Sunrun is Ford's chosen installer for the home integration system. That's the system that will allow Ford F-150 Lightning customers to run their homes from their trucks in the event of a power cut. When it was announced last year at the F-150 Lightning reveal event, it was pretty much considered a unique selling point of the pickup. And frankly, it's one of the reasons we decided to buy one. Since then, there have been lots of rumours and questions about how exactly that system would work, or indeed how much it would be. Thankfully, the lovely Tom Malogny did a wonderful breakdown of what's needed for the home integration system earlier this year on his channel, and I'll link to his video below. But earlier this week, we finally learned official pricing for the actual integration system. To start, you'll need the Ford Charge Station Pro, it is included if you have an extended range F-150 Lightning model on order, but you'll have to pay extra, about $1,300, if you have a standard range pickup. You'll also need to have Ford's Pro Power system set up to allow vehicle-to-home integration, but that should be done free by your dealer. Again, that is, if you have an extended range F-150 Lightning. I don't know if standard rangers will have to pay for it. But the actual home integration system, it consists of three things. An automated power transfer switch, a wall-mounted power inverter, and a tiny wall-mounted lithium-ion battery. While Sunrun is Ford's preferred partner, and installation costs can, and 
will vary greatly depending on your individual home electrical setup. Sunrun doesn't cover every single state in the US. And for those in states where it doesn't operate, like Oregon, where we happen to be based, you're basically directed to a wholesale electrical supplier called AEE Express. There, you can order the entire kit for 3,895 US dollars not including the Charge Station Pro, by the way. The site also warns you that you're only purchasing the hardware from the site, not all of the ancillaries you'll need to actually connect it to your home electrical system, and also says, quote, we strongly recommend having a licensed electrician assist you with the installation, end quote. And of course, in the US, that means you're gonna have to pull a lot of permits. So, you know, if you are a licensed electrician in the state of Oregon, and would like to be on a video with us, let's talk. Why so expensive though when EV charging stations are so much cheaper? Well, it boils down to all of the hardware you need to actually safely operate a vehicle to home system. The automatic switchover is required by law to make sure that if a power cut occurs and your truck starts powering the house, there is absolutely no way that it can accidentally backfeed power to the grid. If it did, it would put the lives of everyone working on the electrical supply in jeopardy. Then there's the inverter itself, which takes the 400 volt DC coming out of the F-150 Lightning's CCS charge port, converting it to the split phase power that most US residential customers have in their homes. And as for the battery, well, it's called a dark start battery because if the power goes off, the system needs to have a tiny little battery attached to it that can help it operate long enough to tell the truck, hey, we have no power, please turn on. It's a super thin lithium ion battery with a 216 watt hour capacity, which literally is enough to keep things operating while the power gets transferred over and nothing else. I should also note though, that if you are someone who wants to use the F-150 Lightning to provide power to your home, and you already have a manual generator hookup and power transfer switch on the outside of your house, you could use that and an appropriate power cord to just power your home directly from your truck without all of the expensive, fancy automatic hardware. But it would not be automatic. You'd have to do it by yourself. Like the F-150 Lightning, we personally are planning on getting Ford's official integration system. Although given that cost, <laughs> we're gonna have to save up quite a lot first. So watch this space. That's it for today. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links in the video description. But if you want a more generalized news roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter vehicles, you should totally check out our news roundup show every weekend. And don't forget that we produce videos every single day on this network for you to enjoy, ranging from deep dives and features to tutorials, unboxings and full-blown epic car reviews. If you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolved Take 2, and give that bell a gentle ding to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month supporters, Chris Maxwell, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla and the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Regine Fellows, Rory Litwin, Jim Burness, Chris Asenta and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month supporters. They are Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and Ian. If you would like to be part of that amazing list, you can join Patreon at the link below, hit the join button to support us on YouTube, or you can show us your support through Ko-fi or by buying something from our cool swag store. And if you are unable to support us financially, just know that watching the video and sharing it really does make a difference, even if you're only sharing it with your mortal enemies. Oh, and if you are already a Patreon supporter, please know that we love your support, but please double check to make sure your credit card hasn't expired. We've got currently over 250 Patreon supporters whose credit cards have expired. That totals up to more than $14,000 of lost annual revenue per year, which means we don't get the income we need 
and we can't do as much as we'd like. So thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving.